is NBC 10 News. On the NBC 10 Consumer Watch, despite the turmoil on Wall Street, there are some bright spots. NBC 10 mm -hmm. Consumer Reporter Tracy Davison is here to explain. Glad to hear this, Tracy. Oh, of course. Well, the bright spots include lower gas prices, gold prices are skyrocketing, good if you have some gold to sell, and mortgage rates remain very low, which means if you're looking for some extra cash, it may be time to figure out if it'd be worth it for you to refinance. And joining me now is Vincent Ingui. He's from Louvier's Mortgage Corporation. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me back. Thank you. So the mortgage rates are super, super low. So people are saying, should I do it? What's the rule of thumb when you compare what your interest rate is with what the current interest rate is? Well, the general rule of thumb and bright spots, I think, is a perfect way to put it between the storm and the stock market. We've got to find some bright <laughs> right. spots, right? Rates are at historic lows. So um, the general rule of thumb used to be, and everyone that seems to still be out there, is you need to save 1% on average on your mortgage rate. Well, that's a relative term because if you owe 400000 on your mortgage versus 100000 that 1% savings could really change. Sometimes it may or may not be worth it. So what we look at, the simple calculation is how much are you saving monthly from the lower interest rate and how much is it costing you in order to get that, in, that refinance done. So in other words, if it costs you $5,000 to refinance and you're saving, let's say, $200 a month, within 25 months you're making your money back. It depends if you want, plan on being there for 25 months. Conversely, if it costs you $5,000 and you're saving $100 a month, now it's 50 months before you get your money back. So that's the easy calculation. Closing costs, uh, divide the monthly payment into that. Let's talk about the reasons to refinance. What are they? Well, naturally, saving the, money. the interest rates, you're saving money. So yeah. you're saving money because you may need cash. So to reduce your monthly payment, um, you can, you know, going from a 5% interest rate, let's say down to a 4% interest rate, you're saving money on a, on a cash flow basis. You naturally may want to build equity faster. So that means reduce the term. So if you took out a 30-year mortgage and you're maybe somewhere in the, in the five, mid to 5% range, mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many clients are reducing from 30-year fix down to 15-year fix, which are now in the mid Threes. So you can reduce the term, which ultimately is going to save you a whole bunch as far as monthly payments. And naturally, if you know if your credit score improved or if you want to change your loan program, for example, maybe you took out an adjustable rate a few years back and now fixed rates are so low, mm -hmm. why roll the dice a couple of years from now to see where that adjustable rate may be? Lock in your fixed rate now and uh, at these low all-time lows. So let's go over what you should consider. Um, you, and you mentioned one thing, how long are you going to be in the house? Mm -hmm. how lo absolutely. How long you plan on being in the house? Um, you know, where you see you and your family. You know, I have met many of clients who have, let's say, children. And, you know, that's always a big factor. If your children, let's say, are 13, 14 years old, maybe you're four years away from school, where's that money going to come from for education? So these are all factors that kind of play into your decision making. Do you see yourself potentially buying up or maybe buying a second home or an investment? property. Mm -hmm. Again, these are all triggers that you may need to refinance or use that equity again, and you should customize your mortgage around those, those plans. Now is definitely a time at least to ask the question. Agreed. Great. Thank you so much.